Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, but before we get into that conversation, I would like to to say thank you to Amelia Centara and her family in uh, County Kerry, Ireland. And I want to thank them for their sponsorship and for bringing this information to you. So if this has helped you in any way, well, it's because of them. Um, I would also like to thank Glenn Ola for the website maintenance, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com and creation. So thank you, Glenn. Uh, Barbara Berry for her uh, uh, help and assistance with the, uh, the, uh, the ashram here. And I'd also like to thank uh, Eileen Loro for her many gifts and contributions, and Barbara uh, Oldman, not Barbara Nauman, but Barbara Oldman, for her uh, contribution with regards to the telephone and, and sending me a track phone and, and things of that nature. So I want to thank everybody uh, who has made their contributions. Uh, to uh, to this cause, and we will continue to uh, produce these these uh, these radio talks, but also the uh, with the videos. We'll continue with the videos as well. You can reach this communicate or this information uh, through the website that I just mentioned: www.kundalini k u n d a l i n i awakening a w a k e n i n g Systems, S Y S T E M S, the number one dot com. Uh, you're going to hear other phones ringing that I'm not going to answer. You're, you should be hearing one right now. And because we have some, we have a, a kind of a uh, of an animal rescue center here. Uh, you may hear the birds explode in their in their um, communications, and the dogs may join in. And yes. Just one big happy zoo family here. So anyway, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Amelia Centara to the show. Uh, hello, Amelia. Hello, Cousin. It's good to be here today. Um, I'm just just to say that I'm back in Ireland after my little adventure on holidays with my family. So hello to everybody listening live and to everybody listening on the archives. And maybe as I do each week, I take this opportunity now to give you the web address that you can go to if you want to make a donation to support CRISM in supporting and teaching people who are within a Kundalini awakening process. And this sacred work is CRISM's full-time, 24-7 job. And so he depends totally on donations and he receives all contributions with love and gratitude. And please remember, there's no pressure, no expectation for you to give. But if you can and wish to, then this is the address to go to. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. That's www.ascension-kundalini.com. K U N D A L I M I dot blogspot dot com, and you will see the donate button in the upper right hand corner. So again, please, I'm looking forward to this Kundalini satsang, and it's good to be here. And I'll man the phones. So anybody who would like to call in and you know ask Kristen a question about any aspect of a Kundalini awakening can use this number. It's an American number, USA, 347-934-0026, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Cousin. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you. Uh, and as always, it is a blessing and, and a joy to have you uh, sponsoring this show and to be on the show. Uh, nice to hear that you returned from your your holidays in Spain successfully, and I'd like to say hello uh, to to Bruno Amadori and uh, guest number two seven one two, and I'd like to say hello to Adam. Hello, Adam. 
And uh, so we'll begin this this uh, this conversation. Uh, this is called a satsang because it is once again, as I discussed the last two times, uh, it's a satsang because we are together in truth. We sit together in truth, and it is in truth that we discuss the various uh, different levels of phenomena and experience that a person can have within the Kundalini awakening uh, experience. And with that, with that in mind, uh, today, today, I would like to discuss uh, uh, Kundalini fragmentation. And I just want to say that that often, though not always, uh, the Kundalini activation will be accompanied by an intense fragmenting of the current life experience. This can this can increase exponentially as the process continues, and if it's resisted, it can become quite challenging and, and very hurtful uh, if you resist it. In these areas, it is most important to understand what is happening, which is which is why uh, I'm doing these communications here on Blog Talk Radio, but also on the uh, YouTube. Uh, people need to have this information. With information, uh, you have power over your ego within the Kundalini awakening experience. What I mean by that is that uh, when you're confronted with something that is new and strange and, and you don't understand, it's typically processed through the channel of fear. It becomes very frightening. And, and in order to protect ourselves, we put up all these blockages to keep what we perceive as being out there trying to get us uh, in a negative light. Uh, And I'm going to suggest that with Kundalini, because yes, indeed, it is a new and extremely strange situation that a person will experience, uh, you need not fear it. need not fear it. Uh, It's more about how you respond to these uh, phenomena than the phenomena themselves at first. Uh, it's more about what, okay, how is this person responding to this this phenomena of uh, broadband telepathy or the phenomena of narrowband telepathy or, you know, waking up in yoga positions or, you know, all the different uh, paranormal events that can come with a kundalini awakening. How is this person handling it? And on top of that, as it begins to fragment the aspects of their life that depended upon scientific valuation about what is real and what isn't, well, how are they handling that on top of that? So a lot of this, especially at the beginning stages, is sculpting the way your future experiences are going to to direct themselves. Uh, always, well, not always, but typically, typically the fear model is experienced. It, uh, it's, it's typically used simply because it is such an effective teacher of the qualities of Kundalini that that are uh, that are hoped for and and uh, and, and walked towards uh, truth, love transformation, tolerance, patience, uh, you know, hard work, service, all the manifestations of love. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, there's a long list of kundalini behaviors that are uh, helpful to the early process. Uh, and yet, you know, as you may need to find out, if you resist it, well, then you begin to feel that challenge. You begin to feel what it is to resist the kundalini and it will let you successfully resist it for a few times uh, before it you know kind of kicks back and says well wait a minute maybe it's time for a different way to go with this now this isn't the same with everybody the timelines are unique to each of us so don't think that because person A has had kundalini three months and is experiencing a certain phenomena that person B therefore 
you know, three months down, uh, you know, down the, the experience that they're going to have the same experience at the same time. It does not work that way. It works in ways that manifest most along the lines of your karma. Karma being that which has been done before is coming back now to, for balance. And that includes actions, complete actions. Uh, man uh, helps child across the street. Child is therefore not killed by an automobile across the street. Man has just accrued some positive karma with regards to walking a child across the street. So that type of thing is what I'm talking about. And these are trans-existent. So, because it, you know, it is of a, of a te nature, transexistence meaning that it follows lifetimes of, 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 of learning, and uh, because of the the you know the, the gift of reincarnation and the fact of reincarnation, we are able to sort of witness a. A spiritual evolution uh, uh, along a linear concept, if we look at it in that, in that way. Um, but just to be clear, everybody is going to experience similar things at different times, possibly even similar times. But but uh, underscoring the the idea and the fact that this is a very unique process. This is this is unique, and yet there are there are aspects of it that are shared. There are aspects of it that are shared. So you and your brother can have kundalini. You know, he'll have it his way, you'll have it your way, but you'll both be having kundalini. It's just your karma is not exactly the same. And so uh, karmically speaking, your experiences based upon karma will not be exactly the same. But you're both brothers, you're both having the kundalini at the same time. So it's all good. It's all good. And that's kind of a... That's a good way to look at it. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, kids, doesn't matter. This is this is for everybody. Everybody gets this. They just don't get it at the same time in their life. And not everybody gets it in this lifetime either. So if you awaken and then your spouse doesn't awaken, it doesn't mean that you're more spiritual than her or him. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that, you know, this is your time. And uh, maybe this is their time to take a very supportive role because you took the supportive role last time. We always strive to balance. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to suggest that you really want to expect some Kundalini fragmentation to occur. And the fragmentation doesn't occur because something's being necessarily destroyed. Uh, it's not. It's it's it can often occur because something is being expanded or transformed. You know, destruction is not a necessity. What is a necessity in many cases, in most cases, is an understanding of what is occurring. And so, with these fragmentation uh, experiences, the person is ex- is uh, continuously stripped there of their assumptions and and uh, a lot of societal programming and and uh, many of the uh, fear models and the the uh, self-loathing models that a person may have collected uh, up to this point in their life okay kundalini doesn't really uh want you to focus on those except for forgiveness and processing of them you know, you you forgive the uh, the uh, the star players in whatever uh, situation that you're uh, that you're thinking about, any kind of a social interaction with family or friends or strangers, uh, and you begin to to forgive these these actions and these these areas that these people were perhaps fostering against you, and uh, through that forgiveness, you know, you are no longer uh, trapped by their, you know, unfortunate intentions. You just forgive them. You never really were trapped. They're more trapped. Uh, the person who's sending the, the, uh, shall we say, the negative vibes, the person who sends the vibe is, 
is the one who gets hurt most by the vibe. But some people are willing to send it. <laughs> so uh, I just want you to be uh, positive in your in your trust and 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 have trust in the competency of your own kundalini to keep that which is not uh, appropriate to your life away from your life, and it will do that. It will do that. Uh, once again, I, I, I am being reminded to tell you, do not take advice for your kundalini from someone that does not have it awakened. Do not take advice for your kundalini from someone that does not have it awakened, i.e., someone that does not have it authentically awakened within them. Okay? It's very important that you that you understand this. They may be wonderful people, helpful people, you know, people who are wanting to give you a service to help you in whatever way they can. But if they don't have the kundalini, they cannot advise you with it. They have no reference point for it. So let's move forward into our little personal kundalini fragmentation right here. We can be greatly aided by an understanding of what is occurring and why. So if you know that, you know, these phenomena that you're having are of the kundalini, well, then you know, you know, and and from that knowledge, a, a level of strength and freedom opens up for a person. And this level of, of strength and freedom and, and uh, trust uh, really begins to, to be expanded upon by the Kundalini. And it allows you to, to process more of the phenomena at a greater level because your trust and surrender to the process. Okay. Uh, but if this knowledge isn't available, well, then if you don't have that information, uh, you can... And many people do this. You can you know, begin to identify with an extreme downward spiral of events. You'll you'll misinterpret the the uh, fragmenting of certain lifestyles, certain behaviors, uh, certain uh, types of decision making. Uh, as you witness those fragmentations, and you're if you're identifying more with the extreme downward spiral of events, well, well then, you know, that, that can send you into a very deep and dark depression, and there's no need for that. There is no need for that. You know, if you've got three or more, or even, you know, depending on what kind of phenomena, three or more of the, of the shall we say, major branches of Kundalini Awakening phenomena, you have the... Uh, the energetics on the body, you know, where you feel the the waves of energy going up and down the body. You have uh, hot and cold uh, happen, events happening right after each other, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, maybe you're seeing entities. Maybe you're hearing voices telling you to do this or that. Uh, maybe you're seeing lights floating around your room. Uh, maybe you're having out-of-body experiences. Maybe you're having uh, uh, waking visions. And you're seeing the tigers, the snakes. You're seeing the the wolves, and the, and uh, you know all the different kundalini animals. Uh, there are plenty of places to go uh, to to check. When I have one here on the uh, uh, kundalini awakening systems one uh, website, and you know it's kind of like a personal checklist. Uh, and uh, this was. Uh, uh, this was from Al Colley's uh, Shared Transformation. Uh, she put together a nice list, I thought. And on the list, you have muscle twitches, cramps, or spasms, energy rushes, or immense electricity circulating the body. Um, you have itching, vibrating, prickling, tingling, stingling, or crawling sensations. And, of course, you know, you look at what's crawling up your arm, and you don't see anything crawling up your arm, but you certainly feel it. Intense heat or cold is another phenomenon. Involuntary bodily movements occur more often during meditation, rest, or sleep. Jerking, tremor, shaking, feeling an inner force pushing one into postures or moving one's body in an unusual way. Maybe misdiagnosed as epilepsy, restless leg syndrome, <laughs> or PLFD. <laughs> 
Alternate alterations in eating and sleeping patterns can occur. Episodes of extreme hyperactivity or conversely overwhelming fatigue. Some CFS victims are experiencing Kundalini awakening. Intensified or diminished sexual desires. Out of the blue, all of a sudden. Headaches, pressures within the skull, and racing heartbeat, pains in the chest, digestive problems, numbness or pain in the limbs, particularly the left foot, leg, and the left toe, the left big toe. Pains and blockages anywhere, often in the back and neck. Many cases of FMS are, are Kundalini uh, related. Emotional outbursts, rapid mood shifts, seemingly unprovoked or excessive episodes of grief, fear, rage, or just depression, and desperation. Spontaneous vocalizations, including laughing and weeping, or, you know, talking on a radio program, are as unintentional and uncontrollable as it goes. Vocal, vocal creators. Hearing an inner sound or sounds, uh, classically described as flute, drum, waterfall, birds singing, bees buzzing, but which may also sound like roaring, whooshing, and thunderous noises, or like ringing in the ears. Mental confusion, difficulty concentrating, altered states of consciousness, heightened awareness, spontaneous trance states, mystical experiences. If the body's prior belief system is too threatened by these, they can lead to bouts of psychosis or self grandiosity. Heat, strange activity of blissful sensations in the head, particularly in the crown area. Ecstasy, bliss, and intervals, tremendous joy, love, peace, and compassion. Psychic experiences, extrasensory perception, out-of-body experiences, past life memories, astral travel, direct awareness of auras and chakras, contact with spirit guides through inner voices, dreams, or visions, healing powers. Increased creativity, new interests in self-expression, and spiritual communication through music, art, poetry, Intensified understanding and sensitivity and insight into one's own essence, deeper understanding of spiritual truth, exquisite awareness of one's environment, including the energetic environment from others, and then enlightenment experiences, direct knowing of the divine, uh, direct knowing of a more expansive reality, transcendent awareness, nirvana, uh, ecstasy, uh, enlightenment. Okay, those are just some few of the uh, of the experiences. There are many more, uh, but I wanted to read off that list for you, and uh, and I wanted to uh, to help you understand how this will affect a person. What what are the many ways that a person's uh, life can be affected by the Kundalini? And all of those things can happen singularly or at the same time. Now, uh, so if you're not aware of what is happening, it can put you right out into an, an upon the street and destitute and without options. And after that, you know, you just become interested in survival. And, you know, and I was I was put into that type of a position early on in my in my Kundalini awakening experience, which is why I do these things for others because I remember how lonely it was. Uh, for me, uh, I would not choose this for you. I would not choose this for you out of compassion. <laughs> and yet, on the other hand, and yet, on the other hand, I would choose this for you so that you would learn. But of course, you can't walk in my karmic footsteps. You have to walk in your own. So I suggest. I suggest that you welcome this inner knowledge. Welcome uh, into the knowledge of grace about yourself and about others and about why we're here, what we're doing while we're here. Okay? Uh, Do your best that as the Kundalini continues to come and continues to fragment your reality, forgive them. Forgive everyone who may have ever offered you harm or and forgive yourself for ever offering anybody else harm. I will suggest that you start with the identification of what your expectations and goals in life are. Okay, let's just, you know, what's the assumption? The assumption is you have the Kundalini. 
Well, okay. Big deal. What does that do for me? Hello, Chris, and may I interrupt you? Hang on a second. Let me get on over to your little channel. There we are. Hello, Sitar. Lauren. Lauren, I'm going to pack. We have a Lauren. And who'd like to ask you a question, Chris? Very good, very good. Hello, Lauren. Hi there. Calling from Canada. Hi, Big Lauren. Fan of yours. Big time fan of yours. You've really been helping me through my process. Really much appreciate well, all the resources and the effort you put in. It's just just amazing. Well, thank um, you. Thank you, Lauren. And, 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 and many thanks to Amelia Santar and her family for, for making this available. Oh, yes. this No, I mean, I've been going through all the old blogs, and first time I've had a chance to to do some live stuff with you. Um, I posed something uh, on a, one of the chat rooms a while back uh, when you are talking about radiance, and I, I want to kind of follow up a little bit with it. I, I had my first sweep about a year ago, and the energy has been building and building. I haven't experienced any of the wonderful phenomena such as uh, entities and OBEs and fun stuff like that, but I certainly have a lot of a lot of what was on the list you just went through <laughs> on the other thing. Luckily, nothing on the downside of emotional outbursts and things like this. But uh, but what I've been experiencing is the really, really strong vortexes, which all seem to be uh, coming out of all the uh, the chakras. It seems like, you know, the chakras are just building up, and I just feel these strong vortexes swirling around, and they seem to be getting well, bigger well, and bigger. And I'm, I'm really wondering if... Uh, um, you could comment on how that process kind of builds and you okay, know, where does sure. it kind of lead to. It's interesting that you asked me that question. And, uh, you know, before a show, like a couple hours before a show, I'll just be going, well, geez, I wonder what I'm going to talk about today. You know, and I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, you know, right up to the point. And uh, so one of the thoughts that came to me was exactly what you're what your question is about, Lawrence. So thank you. So I, I guess that oh, was just... Oh, uh, thank you. That's good. Thank that you to see the work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Okay. So he's asking you, this is about energy, uh, uh, energetic anatomy dynamics. So basically when the uh, kundalini is coming up, the spine, and I'm just going to assume that things are going from a bottom to top uh, direction. Yeah. Uh, what will happen is, is, is Lauren Lauren describes them as a as a uh, vortex and and they are they are they're, each chakra is its own vortex it's a it's a vortex of energy that has movement and that movement uh, goes in more than one direction but from a linear standpoint we'll say well okay it's moving to the right or spinning to the right uh, when the kundalini comes into these chakras. It greatly, greatly intensifies and amplifies the energy in the chakras. And you've got to remember, if you're looking at a seven-chakra model, uh, the chakras are placed right over a uh, major nerve plexi, that's P-L-E-X-I. And these, these plexi, which is plural for plexus, these form a plexus of energetic uh, interaction above each of the neural uh, plexi along the spine. So you have the, the seven neural plexi that are along the spine from the top of the head to the to the base of the uh, tailbone. And these neural plexi are now having a new energy, well, new to us, shall we say, new to the, to the ego consciousness, a new energy infuses. The body itself knows exactly what to do with Kundalini. The body doesn't need any help from the person's ego. It knows exactly what to do. It's just that the ego has its hands in our emotional body, in our mental body, in our psychological body, and, you know, and the spiritual body and the physical body just kind of have to deal with that a lot because, you know, ego is what, you know, pushes kind of a fear mentality sometimes. And uh, But as as the kundalini is infused into the vortex, as Lauren was saying, of the chakra, uh, with you know, with energy dynamics, the more energy, the more of a vortex you have, a greater expansion, and that there are also st uh, stages within the enlightenment of a chakra where uh, certain levels of stimulation will initiate 
one kind of response, and then a further level of stimulation will will uh, bring about a a different response. So if your chakra is spinning at like say three to four RPMs per minute, of course. <laughs> so yeah, we'll use a, a car mechanic uh, uh, analogies here. So if your first chakra is spinning at uh, three thousand RPM and the Kundalini kicks in it, and now you're now the first chakra is spinning at a hundred and thirty thousand RPM. Well, you know, you definitely know because of its effect upon that vortex, which is sitting right above the neural systems, you know, within the human body. Uh, you know, through your nerves and through the effect of the nerves upon the body, that something new and different has taken place, and and uh, this realization will only increase as as the the spinal sweep moves up. The, uh, the spinal column going through each of the seven, if you follow the Sanskrit model, each of the seven uh, uh, neural plexi centers or, you know, spinning wheels, as they're called, chakras in the Sanskrit. Uh, so Kundalini is often seen as an amplifi- amplifying force. Uh, it can choose what level of amplification it wants to imbue upon that awakening chakra. Uh, to, to further answer uh, Lauren's question, to go into it a bit further, before you even have a, a spinal sweep, you're having, you're having kundalini-compelled uh, sessions of knowledge influx or, or experiential knowledge influx. Now, the knowledge influx... That, that can come to you just from knowing this, the kundalini just downloading a certain level of information into your brain for your for your five sense or five body you know human equation to work with within the human equation. Uh, with the kundalini, uh, you know, it's it's, it's 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 quite strong, and so the the expansion the effect of the expansion can be very strong for a person and it can indeed begin to fragment that person's reality matrix and it's you know it's very important that we that we begin to to look at this fragmentation not as just uh terrible terrible oh my gosh change 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 but as a as, as a positive thing, as a positive event. You know, I'm pretty sure the butterflies aren't going, oh, shit, I have to grow wings. Damn it. <laughs> so I would like I would like to, uh, to take that attitude. Don't resist your wings. Don't resist your wings. Let your wings grow and nourish them and spread them wide. Uh, Really, really allow that to happen, and to continue with Lauren's uh, explanation, Lauren, the uh, the feelings associated with a with with Kundalini burst treatment of each chakra uh, can be quite large. But uh, you know, as I look at you, Lauren, the uh, the Kundalini also. Uh, apply certain levels of filtration so that you still are able to walk around the house, drive the car, uh, you know, do the things that you need to do in order to live your life. Have you found that to be true? Yes. Every once in a while I've got to just, you know, it kind of comes to me in terms of what you were describing before, the burst, and uh, I've got to kind of lie down and diffuse that. Or if I get really fatigued, it'll burst in me again. It's sort of like, go lie down and then work me over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, exactly right. But but it, it does at the right times. It doesn't really impart. If I, I've got situations where I've, as you say, done driving, and it, it doesn't. It does it at the right times. It, it gives me a break. Well, I think yeah. I mean, I mean, as I've said so many times, you know, it knows us better than we know ourselves, and uh, so it knows when to inject that that little, you know, extra attention to say the third chakra or wherever for you. Uh, when that needs to take place, and you have to remember that. With uh, uh, Lauren, are you familiar with the uh, the television show Stargate SG One? I used to watch it in the old days. 
Okay. Well, in the Stargate SG-1 model, they have the Stargate, and they have to have seven addresses for the Stargate to work, right? Oh, I didn't even did pick up on that. I haven't watched it for a while. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. So every planet has a different uh, address of seven, correct? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, and the possibilities are into the billions. I mean, the mathematical variations can go into the billions, uh, so so I'm told. Uh, and so with the Kundalini, as the Kundalini works on you, Lorne, as it works on you and it's changing you, well, it may spin chakra number one at 3,000 RPM, but chakra number four may need to spin at 12,000 RPM until one o'clock in the afternoon. Then it may need to shift down to 300 RPM uh, at around 1.30 and then back up to 9,000 RPM at around four in the afternoon. You know, and, and what, I, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, it's a fairly complex recipe uh, for, for people inside of the Kundalini Awakening events. You're going to have a difficult time charting it in a linear fashion. And, uh, and I feel that there's uh, some genesis of uh, this response uh, in, in woven into your question, Lauren, uh, to try to figure out what is going on at a certain point. Uh, um, you can so I'm not too worried about that. It's, I'm just letting it do what it needs to do. I'm just curious on how strong it's going to get because it can get so intense that I feel like my face is going to rip off, or my you know when I get my solar plexus going, it's just. Just so tight, and I'm getting some wild stuff going down in my sacral, which is delicate, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah I, no, I, I, I totally get it. I, but it's been interesting uh, how it moves around, and uh, stuff at the bottom will yeah. suddenly start flowing up, and then I'll suddenly get, feel my throat really just, you know, start ramping up as the energy seems to just flow up from there. And oh, it's pretty wild. And some people feel like they're being choked too. It's like the. Uh, it's like the Kundalini comes as a snake and it just wraps itself around your throat and and it can feel like you're being choked sometimes. That's the not. feeling I get. Or my my throat feels about you know ten feet wide from just all the energy that's pulsating through it. Yeah. How well, I was just curious on how intense it's going to get. I mean, just hang on for the ride, for the, as far as I'm concerned. Really, really. I mean, that's really all you can do is hang on for the ride. I mean, it's going to get as intense as it needs to get for you, but. But you gotta you gotta understand, Lauren, that you're coming at this. I, I feel from a very very uh, strong and and uh, and powerful force of interaction. You have knowledge. You have knowledge of what is occurring, and therefore, you don't have as much fear of what is occurring. Mm, and therefore, be. you're you're able to process more. Yep, no, that's 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 key to it. Just let it, so let it do what it needs to do, and don't have any fear that you're gonna just this is gonna just dis disability uh, you, or you know, yeah, for sure. Are you in your thirties? I'm actually in my fifties. You're in your fifties. Late in life. Did this just happen? A year ago. I mean, I had the, the, the rising stuff about, the, you know, about uh, maybe less than a year before, before that. Well, uh, yeah, you, this can happen to you any time in life. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've got people that are over, you know, over 75 doing doing this practice, and they have the Kundalini. So it's just that, uh, you know, as I said earlier, that your specific, beautiful, intimate to learn process has decided that it would come awake while you're in your 50s. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's all good. Uh, yeah, now, now do you have other questions that I can help you with? Um, I'm pretty much managing through most of it. It's it's back to this. I, I feel very, sometimes I feel pretty alert in the morning, and sometimes I just feel terrible and just kind of, again, lie down and just let the energy kind of, flow up in me and then uh, I'm, I'm able to manage through it so I have to get up pretty early to manage uh, the work day for that kind of thing but uh, no 
I've got to get into the the Tibet, uh, the five Tibetan stuff. Uh, I really haven't uh, haven't tried to do that. Try try to get the energy moving on the more physical level. Well, yeah, you do want to do the five Tibetans every day. If you can do them morning and evening, I think that will be the best. However, that will herald a more, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, phenomena as well. So you'll, you'll you'll bring more phenomena to you. Oh, great. Okay. Thanks for that. That's good. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. You, you, have to, you have to be in the water to know how to swim. Yep. Nope. Sounds good. Okay. Much appreciated. You're in the water, bud. <laughs> okay. Be talking with you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling. So, yeah. So, I'd like to thank Lauren for calling. That was Lauren. And, uh, you know, he's had the Kundalini for some time now. So really, uh, do your best to identify uh, your symptoms. And, you know, if you have three or more of the kundalini style of symptom, start looking at kundalini as a as a possible vector of expression of this energy on you. Okay, three or more. Uh, and as you do this, and, and start adding up what it is that you have done in your life Spiritually, where where have you been guided? What have you been guided to do? Did you did you live a life where you you know you're in, in a belief system and you follow the belief system of your parents who follow their parents who follow their parents who follow their parents? So you have a long traditional uh, uh, belief system line of of, uh, of uh, experience in your family or. Did it all of a sudden, were you living a, a, an atheistic or agnostic life, and all of a sudden, boom, Kundalini awakens, and then all of a sudden you're, you're having all of these interests and you're exploring uh, new spiritual phenomena. I mean, look at this for yourself and see where you are with it. Have you always, have you always been propelled towards events of a spiritual nature or of a phenomenal nature, you know, like ghosts? or, you know, OBE or, you know, life after death, those types of, of scenarios. Look at yourself and look at look at uh, how Kundalini may have been inserting itself into your life at a much early age, much earlier age than you would have assumed. You know, you're always buying that spiritual book or you couldn't stop reading sections of a spiritual book like the, the Bible or the I Ching or the or the uh, Quran, or you know any of the uh, sacred books that we have in this world. Look at this and begin to find divine orchestration within yourself. And as you find that, really begin, really begin to examine your expectations and your goals in life. And within that framework, see. If you can identify aspects of your attachments to these qualities that resonate with loving forgiveness and those, uh, you know, towards those who may have caused you pain, and then, and then repeatedly forgive everyone, including yourself, and do it over and over and over and over and over, and realize that, you know, grudges are made when we hang on to a hurt. And don't forgive it. And so look at all the hurts you may be hanging on to and forgive that. Forgive all of them. Do it. Get it done. Get it over with. But start with forgiveness, as it can ease open uh, commonly closed heart centers uh, that the ego of a person may harbor, you know, ideas or issues of revenge. You know, really work on this. This is a big, big, big area. And I really want you to give this some some great attention. Because as these blockages are released, an infusion of more uh, kundalini uh, opens that area of the heart and allows for the next stage of blessings to be received. So it's very, very important to to look at your levels of forgiveness and to go into these levels of forgiveness consciously. Consciously. Uh, for those who would like to call in, the guest call-in number is United States Area Code 347-934-0026. That's 347-934-0026. Uh, 
and moving onward here. Uh, Kundalini-based life fragmentations are, are are rarely easy and simple. Uh, the Kundalini itself is rarely easy and simple. I mean, it's easy if you have an idea, you're understanding what's what's going on, and it's simple because it it often goes to change you in very simple ways, like don't eat meat anymore, or, or don't eat plants anymore, or you know, uh, you know, do, do the five Tibetans every day, uh, that type of thing. It will it will begin to change you, uh, but it it's, there's no guarantee that this change is going to be easy or simple. Uh, it'll be as easy as simple as our surrender allows it to be. If we commit completely to surrender to the Kundalini Divine within us and seriously commit to that with sincerity and truth and honesty, then you'll, then you'll begin to understand. You'll begin to understand in very, very supreme ways. Uh, many, many of the explanations will be beyond words, and so don't expect it to always be within a verbal a communication platform that is being used to explain things to you. I want you to start seeing your feelings as words. Start seeing your feelings as words. Uh, start orchestrating uh, how you see certain animals, how you see certain colors, how you hear certain sounds and smell certain scents, and begin to add them up into a different language a Kundalini language, and that will also begin to really uh, explain things to you in a way that you can understand, but not only just understand, in a way that you could feel the truth. You could feel the truth of the information, or not. Okay? But these fragmentations, you know, they're, they're basically plowing the road. For those of you who live in a snowy environment, well, that snow collects on the road, and, and sometimes you need to get a uh, a truck out there with a blade on it that that uh, pushes the snow off the road so that people can drive on it again. Well, Kundalini, you know, plows the road of our blockages, and, uh, you know, these fragmentations, they'll strike us deep, deep to our core as we are changed from what we have striven for our entire life, as we change from that, uh, and we are, you know, immediately thrust into an unknown and, and untested environment, spinning around, not knowing which way to turn, and because now we've lost our confidence, we've lost our trust, and our personal validation is removed, and we don't know where to go. We lose our direction. Okay? These fragmentations can cause this type of thing to occur. And I'm going to suggest that you turn your expression towards love and surrender to this divine force within. Seriously do that. Don't fight it. Don't allow your ego to express itself in a way that is that is not uh, representative of your current evolutionary status. That status is being tested but it's still a status where you don't need to jump into fear anymore. You know, you turn your expression towards love and surrender to the divine force within. This can save you years, if not decades, of refinement. Okay? By opening to these strong levels of refinement through knowledge and the invitation for this that the Kundalini grants us, your life, will be much gentler for this choice. So you can choose to go with this flow, or you can fight it with ever-increasing levels of desperation. And a wise person will move with this river of energy and not resist its strength, but rather make that strength their own. Flow with the river, and you become the river. And you become that strength of the river. So as you embrace this transformation and you allow yourself to be changed, uh, your kundalini fragmentation will happen for this very purpose. And as we are crumbled into the dust of 
of what we once were, you know, so forcefully, uh, so are we also risen into that which we are becoming. The old will give way to the new, and even then will our expressive dimensions expand to hold that which was and that which is at the same time. We are becoming conscious, multidimensional humanity. Okay? Once again, the number to call in for any of your Kundalini questions uh, is uh, United States Area Code 347 nine three four zero zero two six. Uh and it's nice to see the familiar faces out there. Good to see you. Um so yeah. You know, we are becoming conscious multidimensional humanity. But here here is something that I want you to consider. Great is this gift but only for those who choose to receive will they be able to stand amidst their own ruin to grasp it. Think about that phrase. Great is this gift, but only for those who choose to receive will they be able to stand amidst their own ruin to grasp it. This is what I'm talking about. You have to be brave enough stand into what you would perceive as your own ruin in order to grasp the truth of the nature of this kundalini that's coming to you. The cocoon must be shattered for the butterfly to be freed. And we are, we are graceful kundalini butterflies. And let us take that lesson into ourselves when and if this aspect of the Kundalini awakening comes to us. It will go much better for those who flow with this Kundalini inner volcano rather than resisting the the lava that is unstoppable. And if you're in the middle of this right now, it isn't too late to make your adjustment. Just go within and begin to open to this flow. Even if you have entities screaming at you or you're being pushed into kriyas or, you know, you're seeing things that are frightening to you, you're hearing things that are frightening to you, just go into your own pocket of love and give in to the divine flow. Don't pay attention to any of the words that you may hear. Don't pay attention to any of the visions that you may see. Don't pay attention to any of those things. You don't have to pay attention to them. Okay. You don't have to pay attention to anything that you that you're experiencing right there, and I'm gonna t- I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna suggest to you that you choose not to focus so much on, say, some of the negative uh, visual experience that you may see or negative audio experience that you may hear. Okay, don't focus so much on that. Focus more on the positives. You know, go within and open to this flow of Kundalini open to it. Your fears your fears may have taken a huge stronghold within you and your ego will respond readily to those apparitions of danger or desire or uh, you know, want and gain, fear of loss. Calm down and bring yourself the realization of the change that is occurring and embrace this change. Even if it goes against what you struggle towards your whole life, Embrace this Kundalini change. Calm down and bring yourself the realization of the Kundalini change that is occurring and embrace that change. Your life, your life is moving into a greater expression. And so know this and be calmed and strengthened by this. I know how this feels. I'm very familiar with the the cold hand of fear is as my ideas of success and gain were ripped from my body and from my experience. I, too, I struggled. I struggled and I resisted and I cursed this greatness within. My ego was so 
adamant in having its own way all of the time and all of the time and all of the time. And my torment lasted for over a decade because of this. Yours does not have to. That's why I'm doing this. I'm going to suggest that you trust that the inner divine is working from a blueprint that at first you can only trust is in place. You can't see it with your with your you know the visual eyes or manipulate it with your hands. Uh, but you have to know that it's there. This is part of the test. We must have faith. Okay. We must have faith in the development we're experiencing. And for faith to develop, we cannot know the answers. For faith to develop, we cannot know the answers, but must instead trust that there is this relationship of grace within us, building us anew from within. And trust isn't always easy, but it is essential. And I will counsel you to constantly reaffirm your expression of trust within the Kundalini fragmentation, really. As your life falls apart, find a, a quiet moment and express your trust in the Kundalini and what it's doing for you even as it looks like it's destroying your life. It isn't. It isn't. It's just a, it's a course correction for you. Soon enough, you know, within this course correction, soon enough your new life will appear to you. First in small ways, but then in greater complexity and expression. And, and this will be the new path for you to follow within your kundalini. It may not be radically different to... Uh, than your old life is right now. And yet it may be completely different. This will be a measure of karma and what we as individuals bring into our kundalini through surrender. Let it come, my dear traveler, let it come. Yes, it can be frightening, but hold fast. It is all right, and so you will be all right, as long as you trust in the love of the inner divine. It doesn't come to you just so it can hurt you. It comes to you so that you can evolve. Surrender into the arms of grace and let, let the test be met with devotion and openness and confidence. Let that trust expand into confidence and let that confidence take you in to these these levels of, of uh, transformation and these levels of... of uh, of uh, destruction. Don't resist. Walk with confidence into your sweet new sunrise. Because from the ashes of destruction to this living environment of love upon this world, you will become and are becoming a human radiance of grace. This is what's happening for you right now. Don't even try to diminish it. You know, people and their modesty. If you're having this right now, just like Lauren, Lauren was having this, Bruno's having this, Adam is having this, Amelia is having this. Lots of people here watching this are having this. Okay. This is a very, very important experience for you to be having. Extremely important. You are channels of change for this world. And because your ego is being kept out of this transformation, uh, you are able to change within a level of purity that uh, that would not otherwise occur. And so, once again, I think that you are being extremely blessed, extremely blessed in these areas. And, uh, you know, within those blessings, I just I want to continue a bit along this line. Um, you know, in, in my experience, there is divine reality. And I've experienced it. I've been there. I am there. It's talking to you right now. I feel the connection coming straight through. 
uh, in it. It is this divine reality that calls a person to the Kundalini. It is this divine reality that even allows the person to know the word and to even hope to awaken it. Okay, I teach from the interaction of the divine reality, the divine grace within me, which is gifted to me from the Kundalini presence, which itself is divinity. And the transformations that have occurred due to this presence, because of this, I'm only partially focused on this reality, as there is much more to the potential of the human being and the multiple realities of potential that exist outside of the five-sense model most people partake of. And it is from these areas that the gifts of Kundalini originate. These areas impressed upon the physical community of what makes a person. And when I say physical community, I mean communities of cells doing different jobs, communities of of, uh, atoms doing different jobs, molecules doing different jobs. (coughs) I'm talking about the community that is your body. Okay? that is your body. Uh, These communities uh, are changed and upgraded by the kundalini uh, occurring to them. And this form of, of, of exaltation doesn't stop at the physiological, but it continues on into the mental and emotional, psychological and spiritual areas. And from these compressed interactions is the total person accessed and the total potential of that person begun to express. To express. And as we begin to understand the ocean of knowledge that comprises the Kundalini and, and its interaction with us, and its place within the divine filaments, we see and experience that it is also a form of divine imperial consciousness. And I use the word imperial on purpose as it as as the Kundalini has its imperial agenda with the person that it's awakening in. And that agenda is movable and yet uh immovable. It's 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 flexible and yet it's inflexible and it, it depends uh on the karma of an individual a lot about how uh, this agenda is going to be formatted for this individual. Uh, it, it, the Kundalini will choose how it will be or not be within the person it's awakening in, uh, whether this person will have a stronger entity experience or a Kriya experience or what special gi- gifts within the context of, of of its Kundalini will it be given. Uh, Kundalini has knowledge of a person that trans- transcends the ego and, the, and it transcends the mental-based and emotional-based understandings of that person. It can be seen as a divine breath, and yet one that has the expressive elements of the divine consciousness within its respiration, within the, the breathing of the divine breath. The divine consciousness is also accessed and the kundalini will breathe you. It will breathe you, the person. And yes, as you breathe yourself, you're also breathing the kundalini, but you need to expand into the understanding that as you breathe yourself, kundalini is also breathing you. You are the air to its to its respiration. Your energy is its nourishment. Your your understanding and your surrender is its is its uh fuel and its enlightenment. Okay. The Kundalini the Kundalini will come to the human body and it will change its many systems. And uh, this can be seen as a natural landscape for the divine breath. This enlightened wind to move across and within. And as we begin to awaken, all of our body components begin to be transformed and felt within its caress. So it's not just like you know, at first, yes, we can see that the uh, the, the left big toenail has gone black and and uh, we can kind of look back in our past and go, oh, yeah, 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 okay, I've done this kind of unknown spiritual path and, and uh, wow, okay, so it's led me to here and I have this black big toe or 
I'm having some of the uh, phenomena that I mentioned earlier in the program. Well, hmm, wow, okay. Uh, you know, as this begins to awaken, all of the body components begin to be transformed and felt within this keras, often at the same time. And this compressed form of multi-vectored, tactile, unperceivable effects, uh, you know, this, this will affect the tactile phenomenon, it's not always linear. I mean, A does not always equal B, and that does not always equal C. Uh, though some are similar, and some are far and away outside of what we can comfortably call a zone of understanding. Like the wings, you know, people saying, how can I grow wings, you know? And how come I'm feeling these wing stubs up there at my shoulders, and what's going on with that? Well, wings, wings are, are a very real and very standard and very substantial Kundalini gift, and it's an indication of the spirit, uh, the spirit uh, flying into enlightenment, or the uh, the wings of the spirit taking a person into enlightenment. Uh, and as we begin to awaken all of our body components, and these begin to be transformed, uh, you know, experiences like the uh, the wings can become more pronounced, and yet. You know, they'll be far outside of your current understanding of, of, of why you might have a, a sore shoulders and why you might be perceiving wings when physically you don't seem to see them, and yet you physically feel them attached to you. And you can move them. Okay. So there are plenty of, uh, of, of experiences of a kundalini nature that I have not gone into uh so much publicly, and yet it's only because of the fantastic aspect of it that I I hesitate to do so. Because you know, as, as you know, I already go out way out on a limb uh, with some of uh, of what is being said about life and about the agenda of the Kundalini in a person. Um, adding wings into the mix, you know, just makes it a little bit more uh, difficult for people to to uh, to ingest and, and to. Uh, metabolize um, so there's that uh, in um, yeah it is in the area of of life uh, that kundalini occupies but also in the area of what we call death kundalini is beyond life and death it's one of the creations that allowed life and death to even occur um Kundalini is the living word. It is that thing. And it is that living word or spoken or recorded or transmitted form of the Kundalini uh, as it is given through the organic human form to other human organic forms. And uh, uh, We are that living word. We are that life and that death that is not alive and yet is not death. Uh, we are beyond, in many ways, beyond the uh, the areas of refinement that much of this world is dedicated to. We're beyond that. And the fact that, that the Kundalini living word is, is occupying your body and is coming through you and changing you into that Kundalini butterfly, well, that, that should be proof enough for most of you. Okay. But living with Kundalini in the Western world can be very, very challenging, and and this is what uh, most of my conversations will be about. And this, and so you know, living with this Kundalini uh, awake in your body, inside of a world that only recognizes mundane uh, nature and mundane science, you know, it's only the explainable that we like to trust. Uh, you know, I'm going to suggest that this. Kundalini is a communication of the divine from the source of its nature within the human form. Let me let me say that again. The Kundalini is the communication of the divine from the source of its nature within the human form. And this is how the spoken or read Sanskrit can bring us to tears or how the spoken or read truth of Kundalini is given to those who read it or hear it from Kundalini, from a Kundalini awakened person and from which Kundalini phenomena is given. Music, poetry, and mathematics are also 
able to give of this quality. And this is what happens when I'm singing or when people listen to the CD. They get direct download of Kundalini. They get direct downloads from the Kundalini, which is why you'll see that I do a lot of chanting. It's because uh, the, 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 the words in the chant are very important, but the most important thing, really, the most important thing is the person that is listening to the chant. And as you listen to the chant, uh, you cannot help but to be open to the levels of communication that are happening within, you know, between the, the line, between the phrases, you know, between the, you know, the nano amount of time between one note and another note. You know, this is where much of the Kundalini information is written for people, which is why, you know, I put out the CD so that they can receive those downloads from the Kundalini. Okay. It's important that more and more and more of us become available to the, the divine source uh, from its nature within our human form. Okay, this is this is enlightenment. Kundalini is that. Okay. And this living word, this is the living word that can heal or transform or create. This is that sacred communication that comes forth from the divine within to have its grace recede through its utterance. And in many ways, this uh, you know, in, in the many ways that this utterance is given, the voice is a vector of kundalini in an awakened person. If that awakened person has been given the the skill set of of voice transference. Uh, thoughts and words, thoughts and the words they use are filled with the sacred breath of the divine uh, when given from a kundalini source of specific radiance. And the, the specific radiance I'm speaking of is is whether or not the uh, kundalini itself has given the person uh, the ability to to speak with the kundalini voice. Uh, music and dance, science, art, mathematics, all have the qualities and, and the vectors to to give the living word and to place the living word into uh, the life-filled systems of creation, uh, you know, upon this, this earth and upon this world. Uh, it is from the sacred and divine form of communication that the words of masters long ago turned to dust live on in the brilliance and the continued radiance of their enlightenment. Okay, we we sit on the shoulders of those kundalini people that have come before us. And you may not have thought that you were spiritual this or spiritual that, but you are. If you're having the kundalini, you are, and there is no denying it. There is no denying it. Because this isn't just heat. This goes beyond heat. This isn't just cold. This goes beyond cold. This isn't gravity. It goes beyond gravity. It goes beyond science into spirituality, into uh, devotion, into love, into the into the the uh, creation made of love. You know, and it's this is not a, a contract or, or an expression that is made up of the elements of, of the earth or of this physical universe, only partially, only partially because our bodies are, of course, of that. Uh, but this is, this other part is of the divine reality and its, its effects linger and they don't dissipate. Divine energy does not evaporate like, like other forms of energy do. It's permanent. Okay. Uh, you know, the Kundalini does not die or get weak or fall away into the echoes of the past. The ears to hear it might, but the Kundalini does not. The life it is to join with may die and wither, but the living word, the living Kundalini may not ever do this. Okay. This is the quality of the sacred syllables that are forming and caressing your heart and body, and it is from this exaltation 
that your enlightenment comes. So listen and read and hear and sing and join in the sacred gift of love as it is awakened within you. You can recognize this. You can recognize it and you can know more about it and you can open yourself for it to know you. This is the sound of life, of creation, of the sacred force. This is the Kundalini as the living word. Now, if you'd like to call in the program, uh, it is uh, American Area Code, and that is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. If you have any questions about uh, you know what we've been talking about or what I've been saying, I know, I know, believe me, I know, that... Uh, that uh, you have to listen to these conversations more than once. You have to listen to these conversations more than once. There's too much involved with them. There's too much information that's being given. So I really, really do encourage you to listen to these conversations two or three times. I know I've, I've said it for two hours, and, you know, gosh, most of the time I can fill that up pretty well. Sometimes I'm not allowed to. Uh, but this time, uh, this conversation is going to go the full the full way, and and I just want you to know that, that the um, the the guesses of science are not always supported by what the Kundalini does. The assumptions of science are not always supported. I mean, Kundalini is a is, is a proof that evolution can be sudden. And I will suggest that the Kundalini can speed up the evolutionary process for for uh, uh, an individual greatly. And I will also suggest that we do not know what the divine blueprint has in store for us as we are in the middle of the transformation from the Kundalini. We don't know this. Once again, you know, to 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 have faith, we cannot know the answers. Or to develop faith, we cannot know the answers, and so we can't predict it or forecast it while we're having it. Your teacher may be able to, because you know they have a greater uh, they have a greater visibility. But it's there, and you are evolving within these forces, and they do apply to you, and within the structures of grace that support your own unique divine evolution. And as you are changed so are you different. And how that looks and feels is going to be determined by your levels of surrender and acceptance to the Kundalini grace as well as from a karmic pattern of expression. Uh, it is beautiful and it is vast. Uh, and, and it's a vast new experience and expression that comes from this sudden and irrefutable evolution. I write the word irrefutable because it is that. We are changed. And in many ways, we are upgraded and advanced into areas of expression and experience that, norm that are normally held for those who hold a very, very high spiritual advancement or expression. And it's not so easy for us to surrender to this new, sudden evolution. Because once again, it requires trust. It requires trust in an unseen and not well understood force and we can be so very fearful of anything we do not understand from an ego consciousness standpoint. We want familiarity and yet this cannot always be given within these divine parameters. You don't always get to know. You will be trained to trust and in that training for trust, you will have to do it whether you come kicking and screaming or from your own volition. In some things, we are not allowed to have an ego or conscious choice within that fleshly expression. So, uh, Kundalini will force you to change. And 
how that force comes is going to be determined by you and, and your special karmic uh, pattern. But it has the ability to force us to do whatever it wants us to do. Let's not, let's not fool ourselves. Divinity is big. It's what made this world. It's what made this universe. Uh, the very fact that it is communicating to us through our kundalini uh, is, a, is a very high honor for for us as, as organisms in this, this uh, uh, macroverse. So, yeah, so we have to be trained to trust. And uh, we won't always get our choices. Uh, this is where we're forced to have trust and develop that confidence in the kundalini process that is being given to you. And I am going to suggest that you honor this great and amazing process within you. You must embrace your evolution. And through this embrace, are you able to be assured that you are in harmony and resonance with your own divine evolutionary imperative? So, if there are any questions, uh, the uh, phone number is area code 347-934-0026. All right, so, as there, as there are no questions, I will go ahead and, and, uh, and move forward with this conversation. My, my uh, computer is... I'm messing up a little bit here. I would like to thank everybody who has donated uh, uh, using uh, the uh, the place that uh, Amelia suggests for donations. I do receive them, and I do appreciate them. And uh, if you could also please put in your donation, if it's okay for me to thank you publicly, then I would like I would like to do that. So, yes, uh, uh, thank you all for your for your donations. Um, Kundalini, uh, uh, you know, along the lines of the, of the evolution of the Kundalini, how it will, it will inf- <laughs> sometimes inflict this on us. Uh, the Kundalini will often tell us in what direction it would be best for us to live in, or ways to remove ourselves from uh, hurtful situations. And yet, because of because of our fears of losing the familiar status quo. Even when that status quo is disharmonious and unhealthy, we will resist making any change whatsoever. We will often continue to to ply the waters of the detrimental status quo, even while the ship is sinking. We dare not to look beyond what we have or know or are doing or what the current well-known comfortably numbing experience of painful that experience can offer, we will drag our kids kicking and screaming into our own little world of misery, and they will soon adopt this world as their own personal status quo of what they have to expect from life. And your kundalini will want to change this. Your kundalini will want to change this, and it will initiate these changes upon you, whether you like it or not. Okay, you can be given the message over and over and over again. You can be given sign after sign, and we will rationalize our way out of the information. Oh, oh, now it just isn't good for me. Or, uh, yes, yes, this is certainly good, but uh, maybe later. Or, I don't have the money. Or, the kids are in school and they have friends. Or, why risk what I have, even though it's crap, for what I don't have, which could be worse? (laughs) Or, well, no, there are many other uh, common responses uh, for not wanting to pay attention to the signals that the Kundalini gives. Uh, Comfort is the safe, familiar world, regardless of how bad it can be. Comfort is the safe, familiar world, okay? And Kundalini may insist that one change, and in this insistence, can certain qualities of life 
be subtracted from the comfort zone in order to help the ego mind of an individual make a move in a given direction away from an unhealthy status quo. And at first, these signs and intuitive messages are given. And when these are ignored or rationalized away, pain can come. And this pain can become the method of education. And the pain will usually coincide with a healthy response, whether or not the ego can see it. A headache when the person eats or drinks something outside of what the kundalini determines is healthy for that individual, or or a stomach upset or abdominal pain for eating this or that which isn't healthy according to the kundalini in you. Remember, it's a, it's a custom deal. It's the kundalini in you, not the kundalini in me or Amelia or anybody except you. A job loss can be arranged by the kundalini shakti. If, if the job loss has already occurred, then a dearth of opportunity in the area of employment can be arranged if the shakti is indicating for a person to move and this is being resisted. So, you know, if you're, middle, if you're in the middle of that tug of war with the kundalini, uh, let the kundalini win, really. You'll be much happier, I promise, if you let the kundalini win. Okay. Uh, 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 you know, you can get a searing headache or a migraine headache if, uh, and uh, if, if the kundalini wants you to stop praying or to stop having sex or, uh, you, you know, you might have extreme guilt if honesty hasn't been applied in any given situation. And the list, the list of these kundalini incursions and educations just goes on and on and on. And, and I'm going to suggest that one pay attention to what the Shakti or Kundalini is attempting to bring into a person's life. Nicely at first, and perhaps not so nicely later on as, as the person steps into resistance. We talk about surrender to the Kundalini Shakti, and this is, this is one of the finer important components. Doing that which is given for one to do, even though it is outside of the earthly comfort zone. Let me read that again. Um, the Shakti may be attempting to bring uh, into the person's life that which is given for them to do even though it is outside of the normal comfort zones. Especially when it is outside of the normal comfort zones. Especially. We need to have the courage to act upon that which is being given. We need to have that courage to act upon that which is being given. It isn't to surrender to that which is comfortable or easily done. You know, you're not struggling too hard there. There's not a lot of work going on there. Okay. We need to have the courage to act upon that which is being given. This 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 is really, you know, in, in the United States they have these these sayings that, uh, you know, this is where the scorch mark, this is the scorch mark on the tree from the lightning that is struck. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the bullet meets the bone. This is this is this is that scorch mark on the tree from the lightning that is struck. This is where the chaff is separated from the grain and. Evidently, the birds are in agreement with this, as you can hear. Of course, they stop when I, as soon as I mention them. Uh, this is for those who are out, who are inside of the Kundalini awakening. Okay, and this is for those who are approaching the Kundalini. They need this understanding. They need to have this this understanding because the challenges the challenges to the comfort zones can come thick and heavy. Uh, with inner and outer changes, and we are to respond to those changes in a supporting role of acting upon them when they are given. It's not about being comfortable with the changes as much as it is about being uncomfortable with the changes and changing anyway. For God and Kundalini and the inner exaltation, your own personal enlightenment, Please consider this as you go through the days and nights of your awakening process. Look and discern for that which is being given to you intuitively 
or overtly on the physical by your kundalini. Follow this inner guidance as best you can and be ever able to initiate the given changes in how you live or where you live or what you do or do not do. Let kundalini begin to control your life. Nothing will be given to harm you. It may challenge your comforts and excite your fears, but these will be aspects of your life that you're better off without. It may challenge your beliefs or your system of beliefs, and this may cause you to stretch uh, far beyond your current parameters, and yet it is good for you to do this. It's good for you to have this. It is a gift, a gift of the divine within. And even though we as ego personalities, cannot see the point of these changes immediately, later on and down the road of life, we will often be able to piece together the whys and the reasons for the changes being given at this time. We will know later on. This is another aspect of trust in the Kundalini and its understanding of your patterns of probability and how to best allow for your continued development inside of the changes the Kundalini brings uh, within those probabilities. The divine has very little in the way of limitations with regards to our lives and and the ways and means needed for kundalini advancement. It is well known what your karma is and why you are having this life. It is well known what your karma is and why you're having this life. And it is well known how to offer the you, the individual, the options that will be best for the continued development towards and within the divine matrix. Find your courage and find your faith and act upon the guidance that is being given. Big or small, get in the habit of discerning the changes and then surrendering to these changes. We will all have these gifts of knowingness inside of the Kundalini awakening process. We all get this. We don't get the same thing, but we all get to have that which we are able to have. And it's all different. Everyone gets these, and yes, they are unique to the individual, and yet our responses can be so similar in the continuous disregard of these challenges to our status quo. So make the changes in your status quo. And make those changes that are being suggested by your kundalini even if it stretches your incredulity, especially if it stretches your incredulity. Make the changes and count on the inner divine to walk you hand in hand into the heavenly fields. Once again, you can call. The number is United States, area code 347 Nine three four zero zero two six. I would like to announce that uh, Amelia Centara is is uh, organizing a, a a Kundalini awakening seminar in Ireland. Um, I'm going to ask her to come on and talk a little bit about that. Are you still awake, Amelia? Did I put you to sleep? <laughs> no, Kristen. I I have to say I've just been completely and absolutely thankful that, you know, I have access, you know, that I know you, that you're my teacher, because I was thinking as as, as this was happening, the difference in my experience before and after receiving, you know, information from you. I mean, if I look back in my life, I, I can see how crudely it had been inserting itself into my life, you know, although I didn't know it. I'm waffling. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm in a mode of extreme gratitude, and we have a caller on the line. <laughs> okay. So, let's go see who that is. Yeah, let's take her first. It's uh, just fast, Jane. Go on. <laughs> what do you mean, just fast? <laughs> I don't know what you were fast. saying, Amelia. <laughs> Hi, fast. <laughs> right. Please go um, on. Um, I, I'm in a hurry if, if you're not. So please go on. It was it was really getting um Okay, well I was just I I as I listened, um it was just amazing to listen to what Chris was saying. The difference that his teachings 
and the Kundalini information has made to my life. And I was saying that, um, you know, when I look back, even though I didn't know it at the time, Sashi Kundalini certainly was in my life. Um, way, way earlier, way before I knew anything about it. And I think could have been used the word divine orchestration and that certainly was the case. And, you know, I had a knowing and I had certain information, although I didn't know about Kundalini and I was taught a lot through fear and different things. But once I began to get the information through prison, which my Kundalini led me to prison, um, it made a huge difference. And because of the teachings of surrender and all the things that he has taught me, there has been a huge change in my process, you know? So, hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Amen. <laughs> well, I, I'm some, I sometimes write, oh, man. <laughs> All oh, that. <laughs> I um, hear you fast. I'd be quiet oh, now for a while. <laughs> okay. I'll run my mouth a little bit here. Um, Chrism. Hello. <laughs> I, um, I recently found myself uh, in a situation where I had to make a decision that I knew was related to my ego, and I, I just wanted to passes by because when you start to say how Shakti will indeed come in and change uh, things in you and a lot of times it may not make sense but uh, here's what happened I uh, I recently uh, was looking at my hair on my head as it was thinning and <laughs> I looked at the back of it, and 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 I had, the patch was extending now, be almost down to the hairline, and I said, oh, "What am I going to do now?" I mean, I've just been told I I um, I have um, a couple of songs that I've co-written and I co uh, co-published with um, a friend of mine that are going to be uh, released soon. So I said, well, you know, I've got to, I've got to look as as glamorous as I can. And I looked at the hair, and I heard the subtle voice say, "Get rid of it." And I said, "Do what?" That's that's what my Kundalini's been telling me while you've been saying this. <laughs> Get rid of it. And so, David, David, go bald. I. I it's already done. <laughs> it's already done. That because was the right choice. I said, you know, this is tied to my ego, isn't it? And I got this gentle yes. And I said, but what would I look like? I said, well, we'll see, won't we? And so I, I went in and sat down at, in, in the chair, and the first person that was ready, um, I said, okay, I'd like a haircut. And I said, how much? And I said, all of it. And as I as I watched it fall away, I, I, I felt a sort of freeing that that came and uh, took place, and and yet there was still this fear. This you know, the ego was 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 screaming in terror as <laughs> as I watched this happen. But there was a calmness that that descended over me, and I um I did it. Um, I still don't know who I'm looking at in the mirror, but um, you're looking at you're looking at you know uh, the new person that you've become. You're looking at the Kundalini <laughs> Pasha. I, I just Chico. wanted to, I, you know, is this is this the type of thing? And I, I'm not suggesting this for anyone else, but this is just something that I it was it was an attachment of my ego, and it had to go, and I was I was willing. I have surrendered to. Well, I want to honor you, uh, Fashki. I want to honor well, you and congratulate you for following that uh, intuitive guidance. Well, thank you, thank you very much, Master C. Uh, I'll get off now, so someone else can talk. Well, thank you for calling, Fashki. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. 
Thank you. And thank you, Amelia. You're, you're welcome, Bashi. Good hearing you. So I yeah. wonder if, uh, if if Adam or uh, Bruno uh, can relate to uh, Fashi's uh, hair haircut options. Well, I can slightly relate to the prison because I'm no longer coloring my hair. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you got the <laughs> but you got the instruction: no more chemicals on the hair, and and that's, that's a right. pretty that's strong right. instruction. Yeah, I'm watching the grey and slowly but surely move out into the blonde. <laughs> uh, so it's interesting in the same way that, you know. And it's not to say that wearing makeup or anything like that is wrong. It's not. Yeah. It's absolutely not. But for certain things that we don't understand, the Kundalini will ask a person to change their their look or their attire or their whatever it is they're doing to their body, they may ask for a change. Their kundalini will say, hey, you know, uh, back off of the, uh, you know, the, the the super stripping shampoo. You know, let's give your hair a chance to, 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 be, to be nurtured, to be helped. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm glad you're not uh, coloring the hair anymore. And, you know, I've stopped uh, coloring my hair, too. <laughs> well, will I say a little about about the seminar? Please do. Okay. Well, I suppose to say first of all, this prison is a guest in Europe during the month of the month of October, and um, I asked him if he would um, do a seminar, and he said yes. And the reason that I would like to organise a seminar is because I suppose I know personally the blessings of meeting you know with our kundalini teacher and with meeting other kundalini people and so i'm aware that it's a very short notice but i would be delighted to organize a seminar in dublin if there are you know members or people listening who would be interested and able to come um, give them the like dates this, well it's the 19th and the 20th of october that's a saturday and a sunday um, yeah, and and flights from the UK and from other European countries with Ryanair and with don't know if easy check to me, but they can be very good value. So um, if anybody wants to contact me about it, contact me on the email address which is Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com. I'm aware that some people, um, you know would like to come, but it might be too short notice for them to make arrangements at this time. So, um, But it's good to know anyway that people are interested in coming to another seminar. But really, if anybody would like to come, the 19th and the 20th of October is when I hope I'm going to plan to have it. So, that's it. Thank really you, Amelia. The 19th, the 19th and 20th of October, 2013, um, in Dublin, Ireland, uh, please contact uh, Amelia Centara at Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. Is that right, Amelia? That's that's it, Kundalini. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. And I would like to meet anybody who would like to to meet, or anybody that has a, say an issue with their Kundalini, or they feel that they might need a uh, uh, you know my touch. To help with their with their uh, experience, so please feel free to give Amelia Santara a call at Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. And, and uh, yeah, so I I encourage uh, uh, everybody in the UK to come. Um, everybody, uh, I, I know that you've got kids, and I know that you've got jobs, and I know that you've got responsibilities. And yet I also know that I don't come to Europe very often and I'm, you know, I don't know when I'll ever make it back. And so if you're able to come and visit, then come and visit and uh, let's get you on your kundalini path. I'm going to go ahead and terminate uh, this conversation about your kundalini awakening experience with Chrism. And I want to thank you for listening in the archives. I want to thank you for listening live. I would like to thank once again Amelia Centara and Lauren and Fasci and everybody who called in and everybody who listened live, Bruno and 
and Kay Adam and all the different guest numbers. Thank you all. Thank you all for, for your attention. Bye-bye. So the FMS are, are Kundalini-related. Uh, Emotional outbursts, rapid mood shifts, seemingly unprovoked or excessive Episodes of grief, fear, rage, or dis- depression, and desperation. Spontaneous vocalizations, including laughing and weeping, or, you know, talking on a radio program, are as unintentional and uncontrollable as it goes. <laughs> yeah, vocal, vocal creeds. Hearing an inner sound or sounds, uh, classically described as flute, drum, waterfall, birds singing, bees buzzing, but which may also sound like roaring, whooshing, and thunderous noises, or like ringing in the ears. Mental confusion, difficulty concentrating, altered states of consciousness, heightened awareness, spontaneous trance states, mystical experiences. If the body's prior belief system is too threatened by these, they can lead to bouts of psychosis or self grandiosity. Heat, strange activity of blissful sensations in the head, particularly in the crown area. Ecstasy, bliss, and intervals, tremendous joy, love, peace, and compassion. Psychic experiences, extrasensory perception, out-of-body experiences, past life memories, astral travel, direct awareness of auras and chakras, contact with spirit guides through inner voices, dreams, or visions, healing powers. Increased creativity, new interest in self-expression, and spiritual communication through music, art, poetry, intensified understanding and sensitivity and insight into one's own essence, deeper understanding of spiritual truth, exquisite awareness of one's environment, including the energetic environment from others, and then enlightenment experiences, direct knowing of the divine, uh, direct knowing of a more expansive reality, transcendent awareness, nirvana, uh, ecstasy, uh, enlightenment. Okay, those are just some few of the uh, of the experiences. There are many more, uh, but I wanted to read off that list for you, and uh, and I wanted to uh, to help you understand how this will affect a person. What what are the many ways that a person's uh, life can be affected by the Kundalini? And all of those things can happen singularly or at the same time. Now, uh, so if you're not aware of what is happening, it can put you right out into an, an upon the street and destitute and without options. And after that, you know, you just become interested in survival. And, you know, and I was I was put into that type of a position early on in my in my Kundalini awakening experience, which is why I do these things for others because I remember how lonely it was. Uh, for me, uh, I would not choose this for you. I would not choose this for you out of compassion. <laughs> and yet on the other hand, and yet on the other hand, I would choose this for you so that you would learn. But of course you can't walk in my karmic footsteps. You have to walk in your own. So I suggest I suggest that you welcome this inner knowledge. Welcome uh, into the knowledge of grace about yourself and about others and about why we're here and what we're doing while we're here. Okay? Uh, Do your best that as the Kundalini continues to come and continues to fragment your reality, forgive them. Forgive everyone who may have ever offered you harm or and forgive yourself for ever offering anybody else harm. I will suggest that you start with the identification of what your expectations and goals in life are. Okay, let's just, you know, what's the assumption? The assumption is you have the Kundalini. Well, okay, big deal. What does that do for you? Hello, Crimson. May I interrupt you? Hang on a second. Let me get on over to your little channel. There we are. Hello, Centara. Lauren. Lauren, I'm going to pack. We have a Lauren. And who'd like to ask you a question, Crimson? Very good. Very good. Hello, Lauren. Hi there. 
Calling from Canada. Hi, Big time fan of yours. Up? Big time fan of yours. You've really been helping me through my process. Really much appreciate well, all the resources and the effort you put in. It's just just amazing. Well, thank um, you, thank you, Lauren, and 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 many thanks to Amelia Centaur and her family for for making this available. Oh yes, this no. I mean, I've been going through all the old blogs, and first time I've had a chance to to do some live stuff with you. Um, I posed something uh, on a, one of the chat rooms a while back uh, when you're talking about radiance, and I, I want to kind of follow up a little bit with it. I, I had my first sweep about a year ago, and the energy has been building and building. I haven't experienced any of the wonderful phenomena such as uh, entities and OBEs and fun stuff like that, but I certainly have a lot of a lot of what was on the list you just went through <laughs> on the other thing. Luckily, nothing on the downside of emotional outbursts and things like this. But uh, but what I've been experiencing is the really, really strong vortexes, which all seem to be uh, coming out of all the uh, the chakras. It seems like, you know, the chakras are just building up, and I just feel these strong vortexes swirling around, and they seem to be getting well, bigger well, and bigger. And I'm, I'm really wondering if... Uh, um, you could comment on how that process kind of builds and you okay, know, where does sure. it kind of lead to. It's interesting that you asked me that question. And, uh, you know, before a show, like a couple hours before a show, I'll just be going, well, geez, I wonder what I'm going to talk about today. You know, and I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, you know, right up to the point. And uh, so one of the thoughts that came to me was exactly what you're what your question is about, Lawrence. So thank you. So I, I guess that oh, was thank just... Oh, uh, good. Thank you for sitting at work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Okay. So he's asking, this is about energy, uh, uh, energetic anatomy dynamics. So basically when the uh, kundalini is coming up, it's fine. And I'm just going to assume that things are going from a bottom to top uh, direction. Yes. Uh, what will happen is, is if Lauren Lauren describes them as a as a uh, vortex and and they are they are each chakra is its own vortex it's a it's a vortex of energy that has movement and that movement uh, goes in more than one direction but from a linear standpoint we'll say well okay it's moving to the right or spinning to the right uh, when the kundalini comes into these chakras it greatly, greatly intensifies and amplifies the energy in the chakras. And you've got to remember, if you're looking at a seven-chakra model, uh, the chakras are placed right over uh, major nerve plexi, that's P-L-E-X-I. And these, these plexi, which is plural for plexus, these form a plexus of energetic uh, interaction above each of the neural uh, plexi along the spine. So you have the, the seven neural plexi that are along the spine from the top of the head to the, to the base of the uh, tailbone. And these neural plexi are now having a new energy, well, new to us, shall we say, new to the, to the ego consciousness. A new energy infuses it. The body itself knows exactly what to do with Kundalini. The body doesn't need any help from the person's ego. It knows exactly what to do. It's just that the ego has its hands in our emotional body, in our mental body, in our psychological body, and, you know, and the spiritual body and the physical body just kind of have to deal with that a lot because, you know, ego is what, you know, pushes kind of a fear mentality sometimes. And uh, But as as the kundalini is infused into the vortex, as Lauren was saying, of the chakra, uh, with you know, with energy dynamics, the more energy, the more of a vortex you have, a greater expansion, and that there are also st- uh, stages within the enlightenment of a chakra where uh, certain levels of stimulation will initiate one kind of response, and then a further level of stimulation will will uh, bring about a a different response. So if your chakra is spinning at, like, say, three to four RPMs per minute, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll use a, a car mechanic uh, uh, 
uh, analogies here. So if your putter chakra is spinning at uh, 3,000 RPM, and the Kundalini kicks in it, and now you're now the first chakra is spinning at 130,000 RPM. Well, you know, you definitely know because of its effect upon that vortex, which is sitting right above the neural systems, you know, within the human body. Uh, you know, through your nerves and through the effect of the nerves upon. Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Chris Um, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, but before we get into that conversation, I would like to to say thank you to Amelia Centara and her family in uh, County Kerry, Ireland. And I want to thank them for their sponsorship and for bringing this information to you. So if this has helped you in any way, well, it's because of them. Um, I would also like to thank Glenn Ola for the website maintenance, Kundalini Awakening Systems One.com and creation. So thank you, Glenn. Uh, Barbara Berry for her uh, uh, help and assistance with the, uh, the, uh, the ashram here. And I'd also like to thank... Uh, Eileen Loro for her many gifts and contributions, and Barbara uh, Oldman, not Barbara Nauman, but Barbara Oldman, for her uh, contribution with regards to the telephone and and sending me a track phone and, and things of that nature. So I want to thank everybody uh, who has made their contributions uh, to uh, to this cause, and we will continue to. Uh, Produce these these uh, these radio talks, but also the uh, with the videos. We'll continue with the videos as well. You can reach this communicate or this information uh, through the website that I just mentioned: www.kundalini k u n d a l i n i awakening a w a k e n i n g systems s y s t e m s the number one dot com. Uh, you're going to hear other phones ringing that I'm not going to answer. You're, you should be hearing one right now. And because we have some, we have a, a kind of a uh, of an animal rescue center here. Uh, you may hear the birds explode in their in their uh, communications, and the dogs may join in. And yes, just one big happy zoo family here. So anyway. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Amelia Centara to the show. Uh, hello, Amelia. Hello, Kuzan. It's good to be here today. Um, I'm just just to say that I'm back in Ireland after my little adventure on holidays with my family. So hello to everybody listening live and to everybody listening on the archives. And maybe as I do each week, I take this opportunity now to give you the web address that you can go to if you want to make a donation to support CRISM in supporting and teaching people who are within a Kundalini awakening process. And this sacred work is CRISM's full-time, 24-7 job. And so he depends totally on donations and he receives all contributions with love and gratitude. And please remember, there's no pressure, no expectation for you to give. But if you can and wish to, then this is the address to go to. It's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. That's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And you will see the donate button in the upper right-hand corner. So again, please, I'm looking forward to this Kundalini Satsang, and it's good to be here. And I'll man the phones, so anybody who would like to call in and, you know, ask Prism a question about any aspect of a Kundalini awakening can read this number. It's an American number, USA, 347-934-0026, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Prism. 
Thank you, Amelia. Thank you. Uh, and as always, it is a blessing and, and a joy to have you uh, sponsoring this show and to be on the show. Uh, nice to hear that you returned from your your holidays in Spain successfully. And I'd like to say hello uh, to to Bruno Amadori and uh, guest number 2712. And I'd like to say hello to Adam. Hello, Adam. And uh, so we'll begin this this uh, this conversation. Uh, this is called a satsang because it is once again, as I discussed the last two times, uh, it's a satsang because we are together in truth. We sit together in truth, and it is in truth that we discuss the various. Uh, different levels of phenomena and experience that a person can have within the Kundalini awakening uh, experience. And with that with that in mind, uh, today, today, I would like to discuss uh, uh, Kundalini fragmentation. And I just want to say that, that often though not always, uh, the kundalini activation will be accompanied by an intense fragmenting of the current life experience. This can, this can increase exponentially as the process continues. And if it's resisted, it can become quite challenging and, and very hurtful uh, if you resist it. In these areas, it is most important to understand what is happening, which is which is why uh, I'm doing these communications here on Blog Talk Radio, but also on the uh, YouTube. Uh, people need to have this information. With information, uh, you have power over your ego within the Kundalini awakening experience. What I mean by that is that uh, when you're confronted with something that is new and strange and, and you don't understand, it's typically processed through the channel of fear. It becomes very frightening. And, and in order to protect ourselves, we put up all these blockages to keep what we perceive as being out there trying to get us uh, in a negative light. Uh, and I'm going to suggest that with Kundalini, because yes, indeed, it is a new and extremely strange situation that a person will experience. Uh, you need not fear it. Need not fear it. Uh, it's more about how you respond to these uh, phenomena than the phenomena themselves at first. Uh, it's more about what, okay, how is this person responding to this this phenomena of uh, broadband telepathy or the phenomena of narrowband telepathy or, you know, waking up in yoga positions or, you know, all the different uh, paranormal events that can come with a kundalini awakening. How is this person handling it? And on top of that, as it begins to fragment the aspects of their life that depended upon scientific valuation about what is real and what isn't. Well, how are they handling that on top of that? So a lot of this, especially at the beginning stages, is sculpting the way your future experiences are going to to direct themselves. Uh, always, well, not always, but typically, typically the fear model is experienced. It, uh, it's, it's typically used simply because it is such an effective teacher of the qualities of Kundalini that that are uh, that are hoped for and and uh, and, and walked towards uh, truth, love, transformation, tolerance, patience, uh, you know, hard work, service, all the manifestations of love. I mean, you know, it's it's a uh, there's a long list of kundalini behaviors that are uh, helpful to the early process. Uh, and yet, you know, as you may need to find out, if you resist it, 
well, then you begin to feel that challenge. You begin to feel what it is to resist the Kundalini, and it will let you successfully resist it for a few times uh, before it, you know, kind of kicks back and says, well, wait a minute, maybe it's time for a different way to go with this. Now, this isn't the same with everybody. The timelines are unique to each of us. So don't think that because person A has had Kundalini three months and is experiencing a certain phenomena that person B, therefore, you know, three months down, uh, you know, down the, the experience that they're going to have the same experience at the same time. It does not work that way. It works in ways that manifest most along the lines of your karma. Karma being that which more of the Kundalini style of symptom. Start looking at Kundalini as a as a possible vector of expression of this energy on you. Okay, three or more. Uh, and as you do this, and, and start adding up what it is that you have done in your life spiritually. Where where have you been guided? What have you been guided to do? Did you did you live a life where you you know you're in, in a belief system and you follow the belief system of your parents who follow their parents who follow their parents who follow their parents so you have a long traditional uh, uh belief system line of of uh of uh experience in your family or did it all of a sudden were you living a, a, an atheistic or agnostic life and all of a sudden boom kundalini awakens and then all of a sudden you're you're having all of these interests and you're exploring uh, new spiritual phenomena. I mean, look at this for yourself and see where you are with it. Have you always, have you always been propelled towards events of a spiritual nature or of a phenomenal nature, you know, like ghosts or, you know, OBE or, you know, life after death, those types of, of scenarios? Look at yourself and look at, look at, uh, how Kundalini may have been inserting itself into your life at a much early age, much earlier age than you would have assumed. You know, you're always buying that spiritual book, or you couldn't stop reading sections of a spiritual book like the, the Bible or the I Ching or the or the uh, Quran or you know any of the uh, sacred books that we have in this world. Look at this and begin to find divine orchestration within yourself. And as you find that, really begin, really begin to examine your expectations and your goals in life. And within that framework, see if you can identify aspects of your attachments to these qualities that resonate with loving forgiveness and those, uh, you know, towards those who may have caused you pain. And then, and then repeatedly forgive everyone including yourself, and do it over and over and over and over and over and realize that, you know, grudges are made when we hang on to a hurt and don't forgive it. And so look at all the hurts you may be hanging on to and forgive that. Forgive all of them. Do it. Get it done. Get it over with. But start with forgiveness, as it can ease open uh, commonly closed heart centers uh, that the ego of a person may harbor, you know, ideas or issues of revenge. You know, really work on this. This is a big, big, big area. I really want you to give this some some great attention. Because as these blockages are released, an infusion of more uh, kundalini uh, opens that area of the heart and allows for the next stage of blessings to be received. So it's very, very important to to look at your levels of forgiveness and to go into these levels of forgiveness consciously, consciously. Uh, for those who would like to call in, the guest call-in number is United States Area Code 347-934-0026. That's 347-934-0026. Uh, and moving onward here. Uh, Kundalini-based life fragmentations are, are are rarely easy and simple. Uh, the Kundalini itself is rarely easy and simple. I mean, it's easy if you have an idea, you're understanding what's what's going on, and it's simple because it 
it often goes to change you in very simple ways, like don't eat meat anymore, or don't eat plants anymore, or you know, uh, you know, do, do the five Tibetans every day, uh, that type of thing. It will it will begin to change you, uh, but it. It's, there's no guarantee that this change is going to be easy or simple. Uh, it'll be as easy as simple as our surrender allows it to be. If we commit completely to surrender to the Kundalini divine within us and seriously commit to that with sincerity and truth and honesty, then you'll, then you'll begin to understand. You'll begin to understand in very, very supreme ways. Uh, many, many of the explanations will be beyond words, and so don't expect it to always be within a verbal uh, communication platform that is being used to explain things to you. I want you to start seeing your feelings as words. Start seeing your feelings as words. Uh, start orchestrating uh, how you see certain animals, how you see certain colors, how you hear certain sounds and smell certain scents and begin to add them up into a different language, a Kundalini language, and that will also begin to really uh, explain things to you in a way that you can understand, but not only just understand, in a way that you can feel the truth. You can feel the truth of the information, or not. Okay? But these fragmentations, you know, they're they're basically plowing the road. And for those of you who live in a snowy environment, well, that snow collects on the road, and, and sometimes you need to get a uh, a truck out there with a blade on it that that uh, pushes the snow off the road so that people can drive on it again. Well, Kundalini, you know, plows the road of our blockages, and. Uh, you know, these fragmentations, they'll strike us deep, deep to our core as we are changed from what we have striven for our entire life. As we change from that, uh, and we are, you know, immediately thrust into an unknown and, and untested environment, spinning around, not knowing which way to turn, and because now we've lost our confidence, and we've lost our trust, and our personal validation is removed, and we don't know where to go. We lose our direction. Okay? These fragmentations can cause this type of thing to occur. And I'm going to suggest that you turn your expression towards love and surrender to this divine force within. Seriously do that. Don't fight it. Don't allow your ego to express itself in a way that is that is not uh, representative of your current evolutionary status. That status is being tested, but it's still a status where you don't need to jump into fear anymore. You know, you turn your expression towards love and surrender to the divine force within that. This can save you years, if not decades, of refinement, okay? By opening to these strong levels of refinement through knowledge and the invitation for this that the Kundalini grants us, your life will be much gentler for this choice. So you could choose to go with this flow, or you could fight it with ever-increasing levels of desperation. And a wise person will move with this river of energy and not resist its strength, but rather make that strength their own. Flow with the river, and you become the river. And you become that strength of the river. So as you embrace this transformation, and you allow yourself to be changed, uh, your kundalini fragmentation will happen for this very purpose. And as we are crumbled into the dust of of what we once were, you know, so forcefully, uh, so are we also risen into that which we are becoming. The old will give way to the new, and even then will our expressive dimensions expand to hold that which was and that which is at the same time.
time. We are becoming conscious, multidimensional humanity. Okay? Once again, the number to call in for any of your Kundalini questions uh, is uh, United States Area Code 347 nine three four zero zero two six uh, and it's nice to see the familiar faces out there. Good to see you um so yeah you know we are becoming conscious multidimensional humanity but here here is something that I want you to consider. Great is this gift but only for those who choose to receive will they be able to stand amidst their own ruin to grasp it. Think about that phrase on the body, that something new and different has taken place, and and uh, this realization will only increase as as the, the spinal sweep moves up the uh, the spinal column going through each, of the seven, if you follow the Sanskrit model, each of the seven uh, uh, neural plexi centers or, you know, spinning wheels, as they're called, chakras in the Sanskrit. Uh, so, Kundalini is often seen as an amplifi- amplifying force. Uh, it can choose what level of amplification it wants to imbue upon that awakening chakra. Uh, to to further answer uh, Lauren's question, to go into it a bit further, before you even have a, a spinal sweep, you're having you're having Kundalini compelled uh, sessions of knowledge influx or or experiential knowledge influx. Now the knowledge influx that that can come to you just from knowingness, the Kundalini just downloading a certain level of information into your brain or your for your five sense or five body you know human equation to work with within the human equation uh, with the Kundalini uh, you know it's, it's 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 quite strong and so the the expansion the effect of the expansion can be very strong for a person and it can indeed begin to fragment that person's reality matrix and it's you know it's very important that we that we begin to to look at this fragmentation not as just uh, terrible, terrible. Oh my gosh, change, change, change! But as a as a positive thing, as a positive event. You know, I'm pretty sure the butterflies aren't going. Oh shit! I have to grow wings. Damn it! <laughs> so I would like I would like to. Uh, to take that attitude. Don't resist your wings. Don't resist your wings. Let your wings grow and nourish them and spread them wide. Uh, really, really allow that to happen and to continue with Lauren's uh, explanation. Lauren, the uh, the feelings associated with a with with Kundalini burst treatment of each chakra uh, can be quite large but uh you know as i look at you lauren the uh the kundalini also uh, applies certain levels of filtration so that you still are able to walk around the house drive the car uh you know do the things that you need to do in order to live your life have you found that to be true Yes, every once in a while i've got to just you know it kind of comes to me in terms of what you were describing before the burst and uh, I've got to kind of lie down and diffuse that, or if I get really fatigued, it'll burst in me again. It's sort of like, go lie down and then work me over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 so, exactly right. But, but it, it does at the right times. It doesn't really impart. If I, I've got situations where, I've, as you say, I'm driving, and it, it, doesn't, it does it at the right times. It, it gives me a break. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, as I've said so many times, you know, it knows us better than we know ourselves. And uh, so it knows when to inject that that little, you know, extra attention to, say, the third chakra or wherever for you. 
uh, when that needs to take place. And you have to remember that with... Uh, uh, Lauren, are you familiar with the uh, the television show Stargate SG-1? I used to watch it in the old days. Okay. Well, in the Stargate SG-1 model, they have the Stargate, and they have to have seven addresses for the Stargate to work, right? Oh, I, did, I didn't even pick up on that. I haven't watched it for a while. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. So every planet has a different uh, address of seven, correct? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And, and the possibilities are into the billions. I mean, the mathematical variations can go into the billions, uh, so so I'm told. Uh and so, with the Kundalini, as the Kundalini works on you, Lauren, as it works on you and it's changing you, well, it may spin chakra number one at 3,000 RPM, but chakra number four may need to spin at 12,000 RPM until one o'clock in the afternoon. Then it may need to shift down to 300 RPM uh, at around 1.30 and then back up to 9,000 RPM at around four. In the afternoon, you know, and, and what, I, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that uh, it's a fairly complex recipe uh, for, for people inside of the Kundalini awakening events. You're going to have a difficult time charting it in a linear fashion, and uh, and I feel that there's uh, some genesis of uh, this response uh, in, in woven into your question, Lauren, uh, to try to figure out what is going on at a certain point. Uh, um, you can so know. I'm not too worried about that. It's, I'm just letting it do what it needs to do. I'm just curious on how strong it's going to get because it can get so intense that I feel like my face is going to rip off, or my you know when I get my solar plexus going, it's just. Just so tight, and I'm getting some wild stuff going down in my sacral, which is delicate, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I no, I, 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 I totally get it. I, but it's been interesting I, how it moves around, and uh, stuff at the bottom will yeah. suddenly start flowing up, and then I'll suddenly get, feel my throat really just, you know, start ramping up as the energy seems to just flow up from there. And oh, it's pretty wild. And some people feel like they're being choked too. It's like the. Uh, it's like the kundalini comes as a snake and it just wraps itself around your throat and and it can feel like you're being choked sometimes. That's it's the not. feeling I get. Or my my throat feels about you know ten feet wide from just all the energy that's pulsating through it. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I was just curious on how intense it's going to get. I mean, just hang on for the ride, for the, as far as I'm concerned. Really, really. I mean, that's really all you can do is hang on for the ride. I mean, it's going to get intense as it needs to get for you, but. But you gotta you gotta understand, Lauren, that you're coming at this. I, I feel from a very very uh, strong and and uh, and powerful force of interaction. You have knowledge. You have knowledge of what is occurring, and therefore, you don't have as much fear of what is occurring. Mm, and therefore, you. you're you're able to process more. Yep, no, that's 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 key to it. Just let it, so let it do what it needs to do, and don't have any fear that you're gonna just this is gonna just dis- disability uh, you, or you know, yeah, for sure. Are you in your thirties? I'm actually in my fifties. You're your fifties. Pretty late in this, life. Did this just happen? A year ago. I mean, I had the, 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 the rising stuff about the, you know, about uh, maybe less than a year before, before that. Well, uh, yeah, you, this can happen to you any time in life, and uh, and uh, you know, I've got people that are over, you know, over seventy-five doing doing this practice, and they have the Kundalini. So it's just that uh, you know, as I said earlier, that your specific, beautiful, intimate to Lauren process has decided that it would come awake while you're in your 50s. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's all good. Uh, yeah, now, now do you have other questions that I can help you with? Um, I'm pretty much managing through most of it. It's it's back to this. I, I feel very 
sometimes I feel pretty alert in the morning, and sometimes I just feel terrible and just kind of, again, lie down and just let the energy kind of flow up in me, and then uh, I'm, I'm able to manage through it. So I have to get up pretty early to manage uh, the work day for that kind of thing. But, uh, no, I've got to get into the, the Tibet, uh, the five Tibetan stuff. Uh, I really haven't uh, haven't tried to do that, try, try to get the energy moving on the more physical level. Well, yeah, you do want to do the five Tibetans every day. If you can do them morning and evening, I think that will be the best. However, that will herald a more, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, phenomena as well. So you'll, you'll you'll bring more phenomena to you. Oh, great! <laughs> okay, thanks for that. That's good. It's all good. That. <laughs> it's all good. You you have to you have to be in the water to know how to swim. Yep. Nope. Sounds good. Okay, much appreciated. You're in the water, bud. <laughs> okay. Be talking with you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. So, yeah, so I'd like to thank Lauren for calling. That was Lauren. And, uh, you know, he's had the Kundalini for some time now. So, really, uh, do your best to identify uh, your symptoms. And, you know, if you have three or more, which has been done before, is coming back now to, for balance. And that includes actions, complete actions. Uh, man uh, helps child across the street. Child is therefore not killed by an automobile across the street. Man has just accrued some positive karma with regards to walking a child across the street. So that type of thing is what I'm talking about. And these are trans existence. So because, it, you know, it is of a, of a TE nature, transexistence, meaning that it follows lifetimes of, 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 of learning. And uh, because of the, the you know, the, the gift of reincarnation and the fact of reincarnation, we are able to sort of witness a a spiritual evolution uh, uh, along a linear concept, if we look at it in that, in that way. Um, but just to be clear, everybody is going to experience similar things at different times, possibly even similar times. But, but uh, underscoring the the idea and the fact that this is a very unique process. This is this is unique, and yet there are there are aspects of it that are shared. There are aspects of it that are shared. So you and your brother can have kundalini. You know, he'll have it his way, you'll have it your way, but you'll both be having kundalini. It's just your karma is not exactly the same. And so uh, karmically speaking, your experiences based upon karma will not be exactly the same. But you're both brothers, you're both having the kundalini at the same time. So it's all good. It's all good. And that's kind of a... That's a good way to look at it. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, kids, doesn't matter. This is this is for everybody. Everybody gets this. They just don't get it at the same time in their life. And not everybody gets it in this lifetime either. So if you awaken and then your spouse doesn't awaken, it doesn't mean that you're more spiritual than her or him. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that, you know, this is your time. And uh, maybe this is their time to take a very supportive role because you took the supportive role last time. We always strive to balance. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to suggest that you really want to expect some Kundalini fragmentation to occur. And the fragmentation doesn't occur because something's being necessarily destroyed. Uh, it's not. It's it's it can often occur because something is being expanded or transformed. You know, destruction is not a necessity. What is a necessity in many cases, in most cases, is an understanding of what is occurring. And so, with these fragmentation uh, experiences, the person is ex is uh, continuously stripped there of their assumptions and, and uh, a lot of societal programming and, 
and uh, many of the uh, fear models and the, the uh, self-loathing models that a person may have collected uh, up to this point in their life. Okay. Kundalini doesn't really uh, want you to focus on those except for forgiveness and processing of them. You know, you, you forgive the... Uh, the, uh, the star players in whatever uh, situation that you're uh, that you're thinking about, any kind of a social interaction with family or friends or strangers, uh, and you begin to to forgive these these actions and these these areas that these people were perhaps fostering against you, and uh, through that forgiveness, you know you are no longer. Uh, trapped by their, you know, unfortunate intentions. You just forgive them. You never really were trapped. They're more trapped. Uh, the person who's sending the, the uh, shall we say, the negative vibes, the person who sends the vibe is, is the one who gets hurt most by the vibe. But some people are willing to send it. <laughs> so uh, I just want you to be uh, positive in your in your trust and, and 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 have trust in the competency of your own kundalini to keep that which is not uh, appropriate to your life away from your life. And it will do that. It will do that. Uh, once again, I, I, I am being reminded to tell you, do not take advice for your kundalini from someone that does not have it awakened. Do not take advice for your kundalini from someone that does not have it awakened, i.e., someone that does not have it authentically awakened within them. Okay? It's very important that you that you understand this. They may be wonderful people, helpful people, you know, people who are wanting to give you a service to help you in whatever way they can. But if they don't have the kundalini, they cannot advise you with it. They have no reference point for it. So let's move forward into our little personal kundalini fragmentation right here. We can be greatly aided by an understanding of what is occurring and why. So if you know that, you know, these phenomena that you're having are of the kundalini, well, then you know, you know, and from that knowledge, a, a level of strength and freedom opens up for a person. And this level of, of, of strength and freedom and, and uh, trust uh, really begins to, to be expanded upon by the Kundalini. And it allows you to, to process more of the phenomena at a greater level because your trust and surrender to the process. Okay. Uh, but if this knowledge isn't available, well, then if you don't have that information, uh, you can... And many people do this. You can you know, begin to identify with an extreme downward spiral of events. You'll you'll misinterpret the the uh, fragmenting of certain lifestyles, certain behaviors, uh, certain uh, types of decision making. Uh, as you witness those fragmentations, and you're if you're identifying more with the extreme downward spiral of events, well, well then, you know, that, that can send you into a very deep and dark depression, and there's no need for that. There is no need for that. You know, if you've got three or more, or even, you know, depending on what kind of phenomena, three or more of the, of the shall we say, major branches of Kundalini Awakening phenomena, you have the... Uh, the energetics on the body, you know, where you feel the the waves of energy going up and down the body. You have uh, hot and cold uh, happen events happening right after each other, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, maybe you're seeing entities. Maybe you're hearing voices telling you to do this or that. Uh, maybe you're seeing lights floating around your room. Uh, maybe you're having out-of-body experiences. Maybe you're having uh, uh, waking visions. And you're seeing the tigers, the snakes. You're seeing the the wolves and the, and uh, you know all the different kundalini animals 
Uh, there are plenty of places to go uh, to, to check one. I have one here on the uh, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 uh, website. And, you know, it's kind of like a personal checklist. Uh, and uh, this was... Uh, uh, this was from El Kali's uh, Shared Transformation. Uh, she put together a nice list, I thought. And on the list, you have muscle twitches, cramps, or spasms, energy rushes, or immense electricity circulating the body. Um, you have itching, vibrating, prickling, tingling, stingling, or crawling sensations. And, of course, you know, you look at what's crawling up your arm, and you don't see anything crawling up your arm, but you certainly feel it. Intense heat or cold is another phenomenon. Involuntary bodily movements occur more often during meditation, rest, or sleep. Jerking, tremor, shaking, feeling an inner force, pushing one into postures, or moving one's body in an unusual way. Maybe misdiagnosed as epilepsy, restless leg syndrome, <laughs> or PLMD. <laughs> Alternate alterations in eating and sleeping patterns can occur. Episodes of extreme hyperactivity or conversely overwhelming fatigue. Some CFS victims are experiencing kundalini awakening. Intensified or diminished sexual desires. Out of the blue, all of a sudden. Headaches, pressures within the skull, and racing heartbeat, pains in the chest, digestive problems, numbness or pain in the limbs, particularly the left foot, leg, and the left toe, the left big toe. Pains and blockages anywhere, often in the back and neck, many cases 